Well, how's that for a book title? The Rise of, uh, and Progress of Civilization in the Hairy Nation. <laughs> and if you've never heard of the Hairy Nation, don't feel bad about that. It's strictly a local tradition. Uh, as the, There's a lot of different stories about uh, how the nation got its name. But uh, the most prominent one seems to be that uh, somebody went to a house raising and declared that the local residents were the hairiest set of men that he ever saw and the name kind of stuck. The Hairy Nation was originally a small strip of land just north of the Missouri line. But uh, anyway, it kind of spread after that. But this is a book that uh, covers uh, a period from about uh, 1837 up to about 1883 when the book was published. Of course this is a reprint of the book, not an original one. But it uh, it's a, just a small book, about 110 pages, that just uh, covers the early settlement of this general area around here. And of course you got a little replica of a gun that would have been common at that time. And this has long since become public domain. And that you can even read this book online and I will put a link in the description of this video of where you can go to read this book online if you so care to do. But anyway, this little book covers uh, a lot of the, of the local Indian tribes that uh, were around here and the early settlers. And gives a lot of details about uh, both the Indian life and uh, the lives of the early settlers. And it's not a book that's written uh, exactly tongue-in-cheek. But the author took a, you know, he had a lot of fun with the book. He included uh, a lot of stories uh, that were pretty good. Say like uh, the story of a judge that came through the hairy nation uh, looking for a uh, uh, blacksmith to shoe his horse for him. And he run into a bunch of, uh, he run into a drunken old man that uh, he thought had just murdered three people. But actually what had happened was that uh, they'd had a drinking contest and he was the only, <laughs> the only one still standing <laughs> and was uh, celebrating his victory <laughs> over the others. And there's lots of little stories like that in, in this book. And I'll uh, put together uh, some video of the local area where this uh, all took place. Like I said, it's kind of a fun little read. It's only about 110 pages, and I will uh, put a, a link to, uh, in the description of the video where you can go to read this book online if you'd like to. As you can see, the spirit of the Hairy Nation kind of lives on there. <laughs> And there's a local antique store that's using the same name. And there is the courthouse that's described in the book. It still stands today. It's been renovated a few times, but it's essentially the same building as was built in 1877. This is more or less the site of the middle of the Hairy Nation. In uh, days uh, gone by, this would have been uh, very much forested land, very rough and hilly. A lot of the land has been cleared now, but you can still see a lot of what was talked about in the book. up and down like I said back then there would have been very little cleared land but this
this is basically the site of the place. northern edge of what would have been the Harry Nation. And right back there was a little marker that shows uh, one of the northernmost uh, points on uh, the advancement of the Confederates during the Civil War. I should go back and uh, get a couple of pictures of that. Maybe I will. Well, here it is, the site of the northernmost uh, incursion by the Confederates into the Union. A series of plaques here. here got a copy of the Wallace Farmers that details what happened back then it's kind of an interesting little side note 